Timing circuitry is the heartbeat of our embedded systems as electrical engineers. So many of our designs rely on it, yet it can often be overlooked as superfluous and not a major area for improvement or innovation. Can extra considerations on our timing device selection offer improvements for our products in this all too often overlooked area of electronics? Whether we're designing with a simple microcontroller, an FPGA, or a complex multi-core networking processor, as electrical engineers, timing of our system really is the heartbeat of the product that we're trying to create. In a lot of cases, when we're thinking about our clock circuitry or, or the timing that we're using for our FPGAs or processors, we tend to go to the reference designs that are given to us by our suppliers because we know that's going to work and the device that we're designing with is very, very complex and the last thing on our boards that we want to fail. But are we making a mistake in doing that? Are there innovations in the area of quartz technology uh, where we could be making benefits to our system? We've seen a lot of changes and developments over the course of the last decade where, where timing technology has gotten smaller. It's gotten better at power consumption. It's gotten uh, better as far as the accuracy of the actual solution. Today, I have the privilege of speaking with David Meany, uh, who's the Vice President of, of uh, Global Technical Sales and Marketing at ECS International, about some of the developments and, and, and improvements in quartz technology that have happened over the course of, of the last decade and more, and what we as embedded engineers should be considering when looking at our timing circuitry of the embedded systems that we're designing. David, thank you so much for meeting with us today. Uh, thanks for having me, Todd. I'm very excited to be here. Yeah, I really appreciate it. And this is, a, I think, an exciting area for us to talk about. And I, like I said at the beginning, I think something that we as electrical engineers overlook a ton, um, you know, course technology for timing applications is something that's been around for a very, very long time. And I think it sometimes isn't, you know, the sexiest thing. We, we don't think about it. It doesn't get nearly as much uh, I, I think press um, and, 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 and you know, fanfare when there's a major advancement in quartz technology the way that sometimes we see with wide band gap or with you know, the miniaturization of the transistor, things along those lines. What do you see as some of the greatest innovations that have, occur have occurred in, in quartz technology over the course of the last 10 years or so? You know, Todd, you touched on it. Uh, you know, over the past 10 years, there's been a tremendous amount of engineering put into quartz geometries and performance. Uh, you know, today's quartz crystal blanks offer a lot more performance than they did just a few years ago. Yeah. You know, we're seeing higher fundamental frequencies, lower jitter and phase noise, tighter stabilities and tolerances, and lower aging performance. And, and really, the, the performance of today's clocks is a key factor in the success of, of today's modern technology. And the markets driving them, you know, as you know, would be, you know, IoT, industrial, automotive, medical, wearable, uh, and the like. You know, and if we want to look at some specifics um, in quartz crystals, you know, smaller overall quartz crystal blanks with less mass give us those higher fundamental frequencies for high-end communications and other strict uh, performance requirements. But even more important are the low frequencies for consumer goods available in much smaller packages like our industry-leading 1.2 by 1 millimeter package. And also our B-series crystals, they offer much improved aging, you know, from what was three to five PPM per year for traditional crystals is now yeah. one or two PPM a year for, for these newer geometries. And they, offer also, they also offer lower load capacitance values for lower startup, uh, lower current during usage. And they do this without increasing any ESR. You know, and if we want to look at maybe some oscillator improvements, um, ECS is multi-volt technology, which is essentially a, a variable supply voltage ASIC that we've developed. And what this does is it makes oscillators battery capable with full operation from 1.6 to 3.6 volts. Uh, okay. Multi-volt technology also works perfectly with static supplies. So a customer can use them in place of a, a 1.8, 2.5, a 3.3 volt supply, which also means you have less parts to inventory. And because multivolt have an internal power regulation, you also get isolation. So your clock is less affected by power supply fluctuations and power line noise. And of course, with all this becomes, you know, improved jitter, improved phase noise. Uh, you know, yeah. typically, yeah, we would measure clocks at in picoseconds uh, of jitter. 
Um, now ECS can offer clocks in femtoseconds of jitter. Our LMV series offers world-class jitter at sub-50 seconds of jitter, 12 kilohertz to 20 megahertz. So um, the improvements are, are bountiful, and, and, and you know engineers should definitely take advantage of these. Yeah, no question about it. And, and certainly, I think, you know, when I started off in electrical engineering, you know, my initial systems were, you know, I, I needed clocking for an 8-bit microcontroller that went into a very large system in a robot or, you know, scale was not a factor. They were industrial controls generally that I was working on. You know, today, with, with everything moving towards wearables, um, you know, or, or wireless, something that's going to go into your cell phone or just the, the connectivity, the wireless connectivity of everything, I think, you know, design have changed a tremendous amount and so the needs um, you know of new products from suppliers like ECS I think has to change with it how have you guys kind of seen that continued you know miniaturization and need for smaller and smaller packages and in more and more accuracy impact the way that ECS is going to market with product yeah I mean uh, we recognize and, and I think just about anybody would recognize just how connected our world is uh, I think the average person has five connected personal devices, and that number's going to double over the next five or so years. So ECS looked closely at our product for portfolio. You know, we saw a need for product that were very small, uh, used very little power, and performed well under constantly changing environmental conditions. You know, our latest crystals and oscillators have been engineered to offer great performance regardless of environmental conditions. You know, we have small form factor crystals with low 1 ppm first year aging, oscillators as we discussed with, you know, 50 femtoseconds of jitter, uh, low yeah. current draw in the microamp range. You know, these are the products that are feeding that insatiable IoT connectivity dragon. And we continue to engineer new products to meet the needs of tomorrow's everything connected world. Yeah, and I think it's those things that makes it worth um, the extra design engineering effort um, to take a look at the timing circuitry. Because like I said, you know, I think when I had a, a complex multi-core, you know, Cortex-A type of a, a system I was designing, I was nervous. Uh, you know, I definitely would be nervous to, to, to change what um, that particular supplier was telling me they used for the clocking of their system. But, you know, we, I, I didn't ever spend a lot of time taking a look at the data sheets behind those clocking systems and taking a look at it, how is this going to derate over time? How, how's the PPM going to change over the course of years in the field? Um, you know, what is this doing to my power consumption? Is it going to have an impact on my battery life? I think those questions are worthwhile questions for us as engineers to ask um, as we're looking at what we're kind of being spoon fed from right. the data sheet to say, hey, there may be something better here if I do a little bit of research that can make my end product quite a bit better. I think that's a really exciting thing and, and something that, uh, that that's certainly exciting to see ECS and, and others working on right now in improving what we can do as electrical engineers. Now, obviously, yeah, lean on us, right. you know, lean on us to help you with those decision makings. You yeah. know, we understand their design regs and there are things that are behind that, that 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 may be beyond your control, but where they are within your control, you know, your frequency guys, you should be able to lean on them for for decisions and help you steer you towards that product that's right for your design. Yeah, and and that's one of the great things is having that expertise on hand, having engineers that can sit and look at it with you and explain why there's a benefit. Um, and making that adjustment of that change is is 100%. definitely helpful, and and uh, you know I think we all could could reach out for that help, and, and ECS certainly has a great network of engineers along with future electronics engineers who are always certainly there to help, um, you know, to look at those things and ensure that you're going down the right path, uh, which I think is incredible. Now, certainly as is an industry in the semiconductor industry as a whole, we've seen allocation issues across the vast majority of product areas. And we typically talk about this in microcontrollers a lot, um, you know, in, in some of the discrete components, power FETs, um, voltage regulation circuitry, things like that. Um, we've also seen in the timing area, things like, you know, the AKM fire that, that happened, I think a year, year and a half ago now um, in Japan, where a considerable amount of the world's TCXO crystals were being created, um, have also happened. How's ECS kind of been impacted um, by allocation right now, and what are you doing to kind of counteract the lead time trends that we see out there? Well, I mean, certainly ECS isn't immune to the global shortages, the pandemics, uh, global posturing that, that's affecting everybody. 
So what we can do is, you know, we have looked at all of our products and we've rationalized what materials get bought and where those finished goods are made. Um, because of those efforts, ECS has been able to keep materials in finished products in the pipeline and in the developmental funnel. So, I mean, what people want to know is what does that mean to our customers? ECS product throughput more than doubled from 2020 to 2021. And ECS continues to maintain the largest inventory of product in the USA. Our warehouse in Lenexa will typically have four to five million dollars worth of available to sell product. So while we can't answer every question with it'll ship tomorrow, um, we're doing everything within our power to make sure that we're supporting our customers. Yeah, and that's, I think, the best all of us can do right now in this market. The, the thing I find so very important in that is communication, communication, communication. I think the faster that we know that there's a, there's a need for manufacturing down the road, um, the faster we can start pipeline inventory um, and, and making sure that our, you know, our customers are ready to go, have the parts they need and can get to production. Um, and we can start staging that for them early so they've got really a just-in-time pipeline. Um, that's, you know, lead that's times are what they are. That's a benefit yeah. of, of us having future in our, you know, in our corner with us. It, it gives us that ability to turn and or pivot, make changes on the fly and support whatever the customer's requirements are, wherever they are in the globe. Yep. Always the goal that we've got as a company and and certainly a service that we spend a lot of time talking about in this market, especially. And we want to continue to make sure we're doing the best job we possibly can for our partner customers. So that communication, I think, is just key because it, it's tough for us to pipeline when we don't know. Uh, and the faster that we can know, um, the faster we can ensure that product is, is ready to go and move in that direction. Absolutely. So, you know, outside of that, you know, looking at, at the markets that ECS sees as the growth markets and the biggest growth markets for timing and for you as a company moving forward, where do you guys have some of your focus as far as new technologies and new areas that you're trying to grow into as the market continues to evolve? Yeah, I mean, certainly the, the market uh, between both technology and, and um, you know, COVIDs and, and other things. Um, ECS has had some great success in, in a lot of, uh, I won't call them new markets, you know, certainly IoT connectivity markets are the premier drivers, we all know that, uh, but yep. we've also seen tremendous growth in the industrial space. So industrial automation, dark warehouses are help driving manufacturing costs down. Uh, and even before the pandemic, the medical industry was pushing for more home health care options uh, to, you know, free up beds and, and let people heal at home. So, yeah. you know, the medical area has been a huge growth, uh, but really a rapidly growing segment for ECS has been within our automotive products. You know, a modern internal combustion engine vehicle is going to have more than 80 microprocessors that yeah. need quality timing. And, you know, today with EV technology and implementation of hybrid or fully electric vehicles, the number of timing products, you know, needed has gone up exponentially. There's no slowdown in sight or predicted. Uh, but ECS has also captured other niches for automotive grade products. From the expansion in the medical world and municipalities needing heart monitors and blood glucose meters, um, <laughs> gas and water meters for public service, and they want these things to all be built under the same stringent manufacturing and field performance that the autom automotive world has demanded for years. So these automotive grade products are engineered to be used in extreme temperature environments, and they're built ruggedized to survive in the harshest of applications. So all of our automotive grade products are built at AITF uh, 16949 factories and certainly certified to the AEC Q200 requirements. So trying to move into these new areas um, has been kind of a shift, but luckily we saw this coming long before it happened. And we've got those products on uh, hand uh, in future, ready to be shipped uh, to those customers that need them. Yeah, and certainly some new things that as electric vehicle electrification continues on and we get into more needs for certifications, things that, that maybe, you know, I'm not an automotive engineer, so I've never designed on that side other than working with many of them. Not something I always consider looking at, you know, is my crystal AECQ200 certified? Um, and, and to know that ECS is, is pursuing and going down that road and has products in that area, definitely a great thing as we see that sector as one of the fastest 
growing sectors by far um, for the semiconductor industry. Um, and, definitely and, and we see program. that, like I said, in other areas where, you know, um, municipalities with gas and water metering and, you know, things that used to be in a closet in a climate controlled area now up on the roof, they're on the pole. Uh, so that they definitely need that extra uh, design effort for temperature and or robustness just to survive. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, it's it, it, always something else. So another problem we as engineers have to solve. So uh, that, that it keeps us employed. Right. So that, that's always a good exactly. thing. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, looking at, you know, you know, just kind of closing out, you know, when we look at timing circuitry, like I said, you know, it can sometimes be a little bit tough to look outside of what we're being spoon fed, um, you know, in the basic application notes that we look at for a customer. There's a lot of different timing options out there, uh, a lot of different crystal companies. Why should an engineer be looking at ECS? What do you guys see as your primary differentiation in the timing space? Why an engineer should be considering your product above all others? Uh, you know, Todd, we talked a little bit about it earlier with, with the with the development of products that are meeting all of today's design engineers' needs. They literally can come to us for anything. But honestly, the one thing we hear from all of our customers, responsiveness. You know, whether it's quotes and samples or a simple phase noise plot, um, you know, ECS measures our response time in minutes, not even in hours and days. Uh, we pride ourselves on this incredible response time of our internal sales team. Uh, we have de dedicated seasonal technical support. It's available real time all over the world. We've got offices in the Americas, Europe, Asia. And, you know, technical support covers all means of topics from design services, schematic and board reviews, uh, board characterizations, simple load cap values. You know, our sales and technical support teams are here to support our customers and sales channel partners. And we think that's a big difference. No question about it. I think in this world, we all want answers. We want them immediately. I think we've been trained by that, yes. um, you know, with the internet to some extent. And, and I think uh, having a live body that's constantly ready to be there and answer questions, you know, at a moment's notice, um, that really helps us as electrical engineers because we want to get our designs done and we want to get on to the next thing. We want to get them done well. Um, and having an expert, uh, you know, at, at available to us at a moment's notice, that's absolutely an incredible thing. So it's how we measure good. ourselves. Yep. Yep. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, well, David, thank you so much for talking to me a little bit and giving me some insights into some of the new developments in the timing industry and where things are going. I think, you know, from my perspective, this has been very eye opening on how I, as an engineer, I'm going to be taking a look at designs um, and how I should be considering the timing solutions um, and, and take a look at some of the details in the different crystals that I'm selecting, the timing solutions that I'm selecting um, that could possibly make my system better. So, can't thank you enough for the insights on that. Well, thank, thank you, you so much for our audience for, for taking a look at and, and watching this with us and joining us for this. If you have any questions whatsoever um, or anything that we can help you out with in your embedded designs, whether it's timing, processors, availability, um, you name it, we'd love to help you here at Future Electronics within our advanced engineering organization. Please reach out to us at Shaping the Future at futureelectronics.com. Again, Shaping the Future at futureelectronics.com. Uh, and we hope you'll join us for our next episode. Uh, David, thank you so much for being a guest today. All the best. Thank you.